everybody, I'm William. I'm Kina. And we are the Nerdy Weds, and today we are discussing Escape from Winter 2021 board game convention that happened in Orlando over, what weekend was it? Uh, September 15th to the 19th. It's a five-day convention, and we did basically the weekend of it. It took place at the Orlando, uh, Orlando Wyndham Resort which we're very familiar with because we've been to many, many conventions. Our first convention was there in 2009. So it was, a, it was a return to our old stomping ground for a completely different type of convention than what we're normally there for. And like I said, it was a board game convention. And board game conventions, the ones we've been to, have been basically 24 hours a day for the entire duration of the convention. And you can go in there and play board games with people, with your friends, family, make new friends, make new family. <laughs> I don't know about making new family, but okay. Jerry. Yes, honey? Let us just come get you. Beth, I am so touched that you care for me this much. But I'm fine, and I just want to put up these Christmas lights and I will eat your world. Honey? Can hear you. Gotta go. Now, anyway, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, basically, the entire time we were there, we just played some games and met people and had a good time. Yeah, it was a similar experience to the other board game convention we went to, which was Dice Tower. We went to that one once or twice. 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 And like you said, 24 hours, there's a library of games that you can check out, and the setup was the same. I really enjoyed that because even though it was our first time at Escape from Winter, it felt familiar. Yeah. So the only <laughs> difference was, it which was much smaller than what we were used to in past conventions, because of the times that we're in, a lot of people, um, if you stayed up on like their Facebook, you could see that it was going to be smaller because a lot of people were saying they weren't comfortable going and being in a big crowd. They tried to make allowances for that at the convention because they did have uh, several rooms where it was mask only. So if you go in, went in that room to play games and to find other people to play games with, you were sure that everyone was going to have their mask on, which they did. Yeah. Um, some people were not concerned about that, so they had other rooms that you could go into and play games where you did not, where it was mask optional. Mm -hmm. And even in there, you know, even when I was people. in there, I was one of those several people. I kept my mask on uh, regardless of, of the room, unless I was at a table with just you and me. And, you know, I'm comfortable. I guess I know you. <laughs> I guess I'm comfortable bit. with you. So, um, what, no, what was you? funny is uh, they actually only had one mask optional room when they first started, but apparently uh, more people wanted to have masks as an option mm -hmm. than they wanted to have masks as a mandatory. So they they actually took one of the mask mandatory rooms and made it a mask optional uh, very early in the convention. Very early, and by the end of the convention, it was only one mask only room yeah. right yeah. Uh, well though, yeah. two there were two there were two mask only rooms oh, one yeah, was the, a smaller, the smaller room, room. Yeah. where they did the social deduction games and stuff i think mm -hmm. was mask mandatory so yeah she mentioned the library of games they had a really great library of games i think it, the, my only problem was since we didn't attend the entire con was just running out of time it wasn't a matter of not having games to play it was more about what games do you give your time to? Yes, definitely. Um, running out of games to play because that five days go, it really goes by quickly, even with the 24 hours in a day. And when you lose uh, almost half of that, yeah, two <laughs> days over half of that, um, it really limited, limits your, your options. I thought that there would possibly be uh, a limit of people to play with. And I guess in a way there was, because there wasn't as many people as there probably would have been. But for me, I felt it was enough because mm -hmm. I never walked around and, and felt like I couldn't find someone 
to play a game with. And I think that might have been different for you. It was. I, I did have some difficulty. I was trying to get um, a scythe game going. I had two scythe games scheduled. Well, one scheduled uh, for Saturday to teach people how to play scythe. Uh, and I had to find players to come in and play that game with the person I was teaching. And the other people that were supposed to be in that game mm -hmm. couldn't make it to the earlier game. So when they did come back, I had a lot of trouble finding more players for them. So it ended up just being them. Um, and I wasn't in the mood to play a double, double header of Scythe. <laughs> as much as I love the game, uh, teaching someone to play it and then turning around playing it with them and then turning around just an hour or so later and teaching a second group of people how to play. I was about sized out, uh, which is surprisingly. That uh, surprising is surprising. Very surprising to hear you say. I think it was uh, different for me because I didn't have a set game that I wanted to play and was trying to find players. So my options were pretty open because whoever was looking for a game, I just looked to see if it was something I was interested in and then played that. And I was staying on the Facebook where uh, Facebook page where people were saying what games they were playing, when and where, and how many, how many they need. players they needed. Yeah. And that's how I um, found a couple of games that I, were, I was interested in and um, some games to play. But that's we're going to talk about that in a moment when we get to the part where we talk about the games we played at the con. So, um, yeah, it, People's Table, they put up a sign that says players wanted. And if you're playing a game that you don't know how to play, you can even put up a sign that says teacher wanted. Uh, so that's pretty cool. That That's been the case for every board game convention mm -hmm. we've gone to thus far and hope to go to more of them here in the near future and let's get into highlights game wise what did we uh would really enjoy playing what, what were your highlights of the con uh my highlights of the con i really enjoyed playing wasabi mm -hmm. and i enjoyed playing um marrying mr darcy um, I'm pretty sure there was probably some other ones that were uh, highlights, but I'm just I'm gonna go with those. And what kind two. of game is marrying Miss Darcy? Yes, marrying <laughs> Mr. Darcy is based off of um, Jane Austen book, and it is where you are playing characters from the book, and those characters are trying to make themselves marriageable for other characters in the book. And the person um, at the end that ends up uh, with, I believe it was most points or something like that, it, they win. But it's basically a card game. And it's really, really simple to play. The fun of it is, it's, if you've read the book and you know the characters and you know what characters are really annoying and that nobody's going to want to want to marry or uh, someone who is very marriageable for a particular character, it adds another element of just fun to it. But what really makes it fun is the people you're playing with because, you know, the way that they react to the different cards that they pull and the people that they're trying to to marry because you're trying to get certain um, things, set certain set collections that make your character uh, more desirable for a particular uh, character that you're trying to marry because that uh, particular character will get you the, the maximum or the most amount of points at the end. But the way that other characters react when you're playing is what really makes it fun. Because I didn't know anyone. I think at the table that I was playing with, I think it was other than myself, there were five other people for a total of six of us. And there was this one couple that they were just really fun. They were really getting into the, the game. And I could just see if you have fun people like that and you're playing at a party where you all know each other, it would be even more of an exciting game, like a yeah. party game. A lot game. of laughter. I sat yeah. in on the last quarter of that game and just watched it happening. It was a lot of fun to watch. Mm -hmm. And uh, you ended up winning that game, didn't you? I did end up winning that game, <laughs> which was funny because I was losing so bad in the beginning because I kept 
uh, I ended up in the very beginning getting um, a character eloping with a character through no um, by no design of my own, <laughs> and, and I it was the least character the character that was going to give me the least amount of points, and so <laughs> I needed to get rid of this character so that I can go after a different one. So I can go after a different one. But um, it was taking me the entire game to get the cards that I needed that would allow me to be able to get rid of this character. Meanwhile, everyone else is there discarding the cards that I needed. And I'm like, I'm never going to be able to get them because they're probably no longer in the deck because all these people had them and threw them out. But I did end up getting them. And then I was able to actually work on getting what I needed to be marriageable for the character that I wanted. And I didn't it think was, it was going to happen, but it did, and they ended up winning. It was a lot of fun. Now, you mentioned another game, Wasabi. Wasabi, yes. So why so, don't you, I've been over here yakking. Why don't, why don't you talk about Wasabi? Well, Wasabi is... You want me to bring it up? Yeah, I'm sitting here staring at it. <laughs> we bought it while we were at the con. Uh, unfortunately, they didn't have any in the book. In the, um, Wasabi? Wasabi? Help. Wasabi. Do you want to try it? Help. But uh, they didn't have any of them in the flea market, but eBay did have a couple of copies, and we were able to buy the one with free shipping. Mm -hmm. uh, we did it right there at the con because it's a game that's out of print. Uh, but it is a two to four player game where you are uh, aspiring sushi artists uh, working under a master sushi maker. And you're trying to impress him on your final day of training. And you have to assemble different sushis with different ingredients, which are represented by different tiles with tuna, octopus, and all kinds of different ingredients. Uh, and you have a board, you're basically tetrising, or, or uh, what's another way to think of it? You're, ti you're laying tiles mm -hmm. with these ingredients on the board one at a time, trying to get them to line up to where you can score points for your sushi. And depending on whether you did it with style or you just got the ingredients on the plate, determine how many points you're going to get and if you get any wasabi bonuses. It's a lot of fun. Uh, two to four player. We've only played two players so far, but I imagine it's got a scalability. So the two player has a smaller board, three player bigger, four player the full board. So it's really simple. Mm -hmm. uh, it kind of reminds me a lot of uh, Quirkle, but with more finesse. It's a little more advanced version of Quirkle because you're trying to make specific combinations that are determined by these little little recipe cards that you get, yeah. which are either two, three, four, or even five ingredients. And you're only allowed to make so many of those combinations before it doesn't, it doesn't do you any good anymore. You can't, you can't collect any points for getting a bunch of twos. You only get like four, five twos. So Wasabi, great game. We bought it uh, from eBay while we were at the con because it was the first game we played at the con. Yeah, and we both really liked it. And we were like, okay, this is the one we're going to look for at fle the flea market, like he said. And while we're standing in line at the flea market, the, I could hear the guy behind me talking to the person he was with, like, we had to look for wasabi. <laughs> and then I looked on Amazon, and it was like 150 bucks or something yeah, like that crazy. because it's out of, out of print. So when we didn't find it at the flea market, William looked on eBay, and it had a reasonable price much more reasonable than um, Amazon. It's something that we typically pay for games, so we had to get on that. And I will, I will confess, we had a friend <laughs> uh, who had found it on eBay as well, and she was talking about getting it. And later that night when Kina met back up with me, she was like, hey, she's going to get wasabi. We need to hurry up and get it. <laughs> it's so wrong. <laughs> you, all I said was... No, you know, this was hours later. This was hours later. She had plenty of time to get it, and we had, we had already talked about getting it on eBay. But, you know, we had the guy behind us talking about get it, getting it, and then she's talking about getting it, and I did 
say to him, we need to go ahead and get that game if it's still there. I didn't really think it was going to still be there, but it was meant for us. <laughs> yep, we got it. And, and she can always come over then. to our house and play it, or we can go to her house and, and take it and play it. All right, there's one other game that was a big highlight for me at the con. Um, I played several games at the convention. You know, I played this game here uh, called Galaxy Hunters. It's a worker placement game with big mechs. It's a really good game, but it, it, it's not the one that really stood out to me. The one that really stood out to me is an old game, older game. It's been a couple, been about 2004 this game came out, but Memoir 44. I had heard about this game so many times. So many different YouTubers doing reviews of this game, talking about how it's one of their favorite games, especially in the two-player genre. And this is primarily a two-player game. You can play it as teams, but it is primarily a two-player game. And do you want to talk a little bit about this one? Or do you want me to take care no, of it? No, you can take care of All it right. because you were really excited about this game. And when you did get it, you were like a kid on Christmas. So I think you should definitely well, talk about it. The, the way I got this game is really special. When, I do, when we do the video about this game, you'll hear more about the story of how mm -hmm. I got it. But it is, like I said, primarily a two-player game. There is an Overwatch expansion that allows you to play teams of, of uh, five players on each team, up to. And you are essentially controlling an Axis or Allied force in World War II. The box, the normal box, the Memoir 44 base game, is Americans versus the Germans. Uh, they also allow you to play as British in different scenarios. And what you're playing through are different scenarios where you have command cards that allow you to move and attack with certain units and certain parts of the board. And the first player to score X number of medals by eliminating player units or by taking over objectives on the map wins the game. And it is a lot of fun. It's got to be because you had us play it how many times now? We played it at the con twice and I thoroughly lost both times. She whooped my butt. So I'm going to be getting this on the table here in the next couple of days and I want a rematch. You had a rematch. We played it twice. <laughs> I want to I wanna try match. Now, another cool thing about the scenarios in this book and all the expansions, um, all the scenarios are based on real-world like. historical battles, and they give you a little bit of historical flavor about how this battle occurred, the, what the, the status of the different sides are, and that actually affects how the game is played by the players. For instance, the first scenario we played, uh, the German side had one fewer command cards throughout the game because they were surprised in that battle. And she still won. But in real life, the, the American, oh no, actually that was British. British paratroopers mm -hmm. that came in on gliders actually won that first engagement that that scenario is based on. But they also have an airborne element where you have to drop pieces from 12 inches above the board and where they land you had fun you doing that new units mm -hmm. and it and it's just such a great thematic thing the the combat's determined by dice rolls and you got to match it's super simple anyone yeah. can play this mm -hmm. and it is a great time i played it that lets you know it's super simple but what i liked about it um is that it's very easy um to visually see what the character should be doing um, and then determine what you want them to do. Because when you're setting the, uh, the uh, meeples on the map, you have their field of, field of view that's blocked by different terrain. So without really even having to read the rules, you can logically you can know, suss out what you, you can suss do. out what you need to do and what you can't do. So um, what you can and can't do is line up with the rules of the game, and mm -hmm. I like that. The terrain has real effects. When guys go into trees, they have cover. It's harder to hit them. We're on top of mm -hmm. a hill. It's harder to hit them. Mm -hmm. if, a, stuff. if a tank goes into a city, it's harder to shoot. The tanks don't operate as well in cities. It, there's a lot of really great things yeah. happening in this game. And a lot of it's just common sense. And the only thing that you really have to read up on is, okay, how many 
<laughs> Excuse you. Excuse me. <laughs> How many movements can I have? Which is usually three, but it becomes less if there's certain blockage, whether it be ter terrain or, or what have you. So yeah, pretty cool. I, okay. I had to bust this out because it's, it's got tanks, y'all, and and infantry dudes, little infantry dudes, and you're moving these around on the map. You're shooting at your your buddy and. And it is a good time. So, 10 out of 10 would recommend. Uh, it's not a, it's still in print. The base game, I believe, is still in print. You can still get it, like Amazon's got it at a decent price. No sponsorship, but we're, we're willing to talk. Um, it's just a good, like I said, it's a good solid two player game. Yeah. And you get the big expansions going. I've got air, I've got uh, aircraft for it. I've got a bunch of, bunch of expansions which I'll show all of that when I do the actual video about the game so yeah, maybe we'll do a playthrough and that'll be your rematch and you'll be able to show your win on camera <laughs> I'm pretty sure there's no way you know uh, lose, gonna lose on camera on camera but we did play a number of games at the con those were just the standout ones I played uh, the crew which was a fun collaborative card game that had a lot of uh, different, uh, not really hardness to it, but it's kind of difficult to meet the different uh, things that the objectives, the yeah. objectives that they want you to have, the, that they want you to meet with a group. Yeah, it's a really it was, cooperative card game. Yeah, and not really knowing what is in the other person's hand because you can't communicate unless there's a chip or something you play to let you communicate, but you can't all and out, all and out talk. You have yeah. to, you know, give a clue to communicate. So that one was, was pretty, pretty interesting and one I do want to play again. Um, but the other ones... Um, played this game called Endeavor. It was a, a game about the colonization from Europe to other countries like India and some other places um, all throughout the, the Pacific and, and uh, Atlantic Oceans. Mm -hmm. uh, that was a lot of fun. It was interesting. Uh, it had a lot of elements that, you know, are a little, little touchy, you know, but you know, it was, a, it was a, a terrible and great period in human history. It, just, it was terrible, but it it, it was terrible. It was a terrible period <laughs> in human history. But, it was uh, a period in history? It was a period in history. <laughs> uh, you know, it had slavery elements and stuff like that in it. Um, but it did have the ability for someone in the game to abolish said slavery, which becomes a big... In that game, if you take slaves, you get big bonuses. But... When somebody does abolish, you lose out on those bonuses and you have negative points at the end of the game. If nobody abolishes, then you get to score those points at the end of the game. But they become negatives if you if you end up with abolishment. Okay. And somebody in my game did abolish pretty pretty early in the game. So, so other than that, I, I can't think of any games I other I, I played more um, games, but those were the ones that just wanted to touch on because they were newer ones that I hadn't played before or hadn't heard. Um, other ones I at least heard of or owned and, and brought my own games to play. But Viticulture. the Viticulture, um, uh, Survive, Escape from Atlantis, oh, Scythe. But the main thing I liked was just getting to play games with more people because we've usually, especially this past year, it's just been two player games. Yeah. So being able to play four player game, six player game, that was really fun. And meeting new people, like you mentioned earlier, because I've met some people at the con that I'm still in touch with, so are you. Yeah. And I met a, a, a new friend. So <laughs> it's always- She great. made a friend on I her own without on my own, help. Without his help. You know, because I'm so pathetic and I need help. No, no I no, I am. But, I'm, I, oh, rude. Anyway, I'm an introvert. So I uh, do just tend to, you know, play the games and just, you know, meander 
alone and that's normally what I prefer but it's nice to make some friends that have similar interests as you so that was nice to be able to do that and to learn about more games so some games that I didn't play at the con that I was able to hear about was Caverna, Dominant Species, and Unfair. So, uh, what was the other one? The, the ones, the ruins. The, ruins? the the one that was like the game was the con convention. Oh my gosh! I even wrote it down. There was this game that throughout the entire con, different groups of people were they were playing this uh, game. You see it on the table, and it, if they weren't playing it. You'd hear different people saying they were going to the library to get it. Yeah. So that was the game of the con, and we'll have to just add it later because I know Ali and Javi have it because when we did game night at their house it's like there this is the game this is the game everybody was playing but yeah we we've, we've got to add that to the list along with Caverna well Caverna I have since played and really like so we have to add it to the list with dominant species and unfair are there any games that you heard about that you want to play the group that I met their big thing is Twilight Imperium and Friday, I had to go to work, so Friday they started a game about 10 o'clock in the morning, about 9 o'clock at night, about 8 o'clock or so, it broke up because one of the people rage quit out of the game. And they were planning a short game of Twilight Imperium, which is about 12 hours. So um, they had a full spread, I think they had, they had like 8 players at the table, it was crazy. And I have not gotten to play that game. It is on my bucket list of, of board games. But that's the one I'm really excited about being able to play. I have played another game that I saw at the convention since then called um, Zaya. That was a lot of fun. It was a space transport. Um, it's very much like Outer Rim. If you ever played Star Wars Outer Rim or Firefly the game, which we have in our collection as well as Outer Rim, uh, the game board expands as you explore new territories and we had a comet that was going through and wiping stuff out and in exploring the board for us and um, which was problematic because it was making the board just shoot one way and we needed more of a spread so we started struggling to, <laughs> to explore territories but it was a lot of fun that was a game that I saw them playing at the con I didn't get to get involved at the con but I finally got to play it. It was it was a lot of fun. I can't wait to play it again. And uh, then the other thing that happened at the con, which we're going to include in a follow-up video for this one, is the flea market. Mm -hmm. Because one negative thing about this particular convention is they did not have a vendor room. A combination of, uh, of that unnamed disease of unknown origin. Uh, and the fact that this convention happened on the same weekend as Gen Con, mm -hmm. which is the biggest board tabletop gaming convention, in at least in America, the United mm -hmm. States. So everybody who was trying to sell board games was there, yeah. and they weren't coming to a little board game convention in Orlando. So we are going to have a, a follow-up video of our haul from the uh, flea market which we had a great time at the flea market as usual. It's just a lot of fun. For me, it's a lot of fun shopping for board games. I love shopping for board games. Um, <laughs> it just, it, it fills me with some sort of joy. And uh, that's, yes. that pretty much covers. Uh, well, my other thing that I wanted to mention was, um, it was a good opportunity for those who can't go to the big convention to come here to this convention and sell stuff at the flea market. But also if you have a game that you want it tested, this was the perfect time because there was not, not as many people there testing games, doing uh, demoing um, different um, games. And uh, what is the thing they like to do? They like to do like hot games um, yeah, and, yeah. and show those. You had all of those different things going on, but not as many as there normally would be. So to me, not everybody's going to get into Gen Con. Not everybody's going to be able to go there. This would have been the perfect time for people to come to this con and do stuff like that. Yeah. But the other thing is the hotel. 
yes, we're very familiar with the Wyndham. We've been staying there at least once a year since 2009. But I would never stay there by choice if there's not a convention that's going on. I don't mind to stay there when there's a convention because um, most people are not, I say most people because you know where I'm not talking about myself, but most people are not going to spend that much time in the room. They're going to be out on the common floor, yeah. out doing stuff. Um, so the room being a mess is not that much of a problem for them. And this is not something the convention can control no. because the, it's the hotel that is renovating. And even if you're renovating, you should still have a livable hotel. And at this point, I feel like the Wyndham does it. No, the Wyndham needs to pull itself together. It, it's a great property. It's a mm -hmm. beautiful property. The rooms are in sore need of... of some overhaul. TLC, some overhaul TLC. New carpeting. Everything. New paint. Mm -hmm. Less mildew smell. Mm -hmm. um, that was the worst part. Yeah. Coming into the room and it's stinking so bad mm -hmm. that you, we went out and bought air freshener mm -hmm. just because the room stank without even me destroying it. <laughs> and again, this is not something that is the con's fault. No. This is a hotel issue. Yeah, yeah, it's a hotel. hotel but next year, for anyone who is interested in doing the con, we're going to try. <laughs> it's going to be tough because it is the week following Dragon Con. So it's like the 7th um, through the 11th or something like wow. that. Wow. So, and it will be in Orlando. Um, I think the hotel, is it the Wyndham again or is it the Hyatt? I, I don't, I I'm not don't sure what the about. hotel is, so don't quote me. You guys can look that up. But it is definitely a convention worth going to. It's yeah, fun it, was a good, it was a lot of fun. And, and I definitely recommend it. But that is all I've got. <laughs> all right. Well, that's all I've got. Uh, we had a great time at the con. Hope to see you there next year. Mm -hmm. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and you freaking nerds. Next, and until next time, stay nerdy.